this atmosphere, this presence is amazing. God's presence is here. Y'all are on fire for God, and God's going to do some amazing things in you. He's already doing amazing things, I'm sure. So I am just honored to be able to be a part of that, to encourage you, to share some encouraging words with you, to be real with you. Can I be real? Okay, good. Just making sure, making sure. Um, so I can't wait, man. God has a word for you. Um, I'm letting the Holy Spirit flow. I may, it may all change, but God has something specifically for each and every last one of you. I believe that. Um, so before we get started, I got to give some, some honor to my family. And Bria, stand up. That's my girl right there. So, so I woke up at like four in the morning. I was just praying. I was going in. I actually listened to that song, Wait, by the way. I had my beats on so she could sleep. And I was looking at little baby pictures, and I, I watched a birthday video when she was three. I was singing happy birthday to her. And, uh, man, I almost started crying, you know, because that's my heart, my first child right there. And then here we go. So, booyah. That's, that's, that's my crew right there. That's my Psalms 128 right there. My wife, before we had kids, we put that up in our house, and she said, someday we're going to have a lot of kids. And I told my wife, you're going to be an olive shoot. There's going to be a ton of kids coming from you. And it happened. Praise the Lord. There it is. That's the word, right? Those are all my little arrows right there. So that's Bria. You met her. She's 11. The one in the middle. So this picture does a lot because that's our life. Bria's chasing him in the middle. He's two now, so he runs everywhere. Liam, my seven-year-old, he's just, he doesn't care what's going on. He's just running. And then my wife and I are trying to, like, you know, have some time together, kiss. But we got this baby girl, Faith, who is eight months in the middle of us. So this is like everyday life right here. Praise the Lord. That's what you got to look forward to, y'all. It's awesome, though. One more picture because I love him so much. How about that? Yeah. Look at that haircut, man. I, I, I told him to get that haircut. Liam's haircut, y'all like it? Yeah, yeah. Nothing like a dad. Nothing like a dad taking your son to get his hair cut. That's like amazing for me, you know. Prom, marriage, haircuts right up there, you know. Before I go any for further, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much just for your goodness. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here. I thank you that I am serving you today to encourage your children. I pray, Lord, that the words that I share will just leave a mark on their hearts. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you take over every word that comes out of my mouth. May you have your way. I thank you that my life will be an example, will be a, a, a testimony of your goodness. And I pray that there will be some wisdom that will come from what I share today that will impact someone in here and lead them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I think about that, man, and just you think about 16 years. Um, you know, one of my favorite verses is Ephesians 3.20. I tell my guys all the time, I say, you know, 320, you're going to have a 320 life. And it says God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than what we can ask or imagine. And I've experienced that in abundance. You know, a lot of things that I've been able to do and experience, man, it's, it's not what I imagined. God has just totally blessed my socks off. And I got this um, picture here because that was the practice of the final four game. You know, we were going to play against UCLA, and I was on the court by myself. And I just took a moment just to kind of take it in. And I was like, man, how am I here? How did I get here? Like, do I deserve to be here? And I remember I did an interview before the game, and this, this reporter was like, hey, when you, when you played in your final game against North Carolina in 2005 and you, you lost in the championship game, did you, did you ever think you would come back? And I was like, what? No. <laughs> My plan was to, you know, graduate, play professional basketball for uh, – 15 years and then going to ministry. So, of course, I didn't think I'd be back. But God had different plans, and for some reason I was back there. And I had to take it in because it was all him. Um, sweet 16. You know, Gonzaga, we've been fortunate to play in a lot of these games. I played in a lot of Sweet 16 games. But as I started taking inventory, 16 years, what transpired? You know, being in two championship games, playing in the finals as a, as a player, and then as a coach, like, that's just unheard of. And then I took inventory 16 years of just God blessing my family. You know, I, I retired from playing basketball at 28. 
because God told me to go into coaching. And I took a huge pay cut. I had no idea what was in store. And here, 11, 11 years later, God has just blessed that decision to follow him and, and to make a sacrifice and do what he told me to do. So there's another thing, 16 years. 16 years of marriage. This year, September 2nd, my wife and I have been married for 16 years. Like, it's, it's amazing, man. You know, it's, a lot of people don't make it that long, but God has kept us together. And us being married for 16 years is a testimony of his goodness, for sure. And then, and then obviously, the four children, you know, having four beautiful, healthy children. Um, they're amazing. They're healthy. They look more like their mom, which I'm thankful for. Uh, I'm just joking. You know, my, my, my mama tells me I'm handsome, too. But, but, yeah, I mean, God has just been good, you know. He's been good. And, you know, you hear, I can sit up here and tell you about all the wonderful things that God has done, and you can look and say, man, that guy has it all together. That guy has it all together, man. That guy, I want to be just like that guy, man. He looks perfect, man. His life is just put together. He has this beautiful family. He has some nice shoes on. You know, that dude is doing it, right? That's what you would think. But, you know, one of the things that I've been really challenged with, and, and I believe this is from the Spirit of God, is it's, it's time to be real. It's time to be real and authentic. And I want to ask you guys, I asked you already, can I be real with you? Okay, because, you know, I'm in the Christian environment. I'm in this amazing Christian school. And, you know, if I show my scars, you might not hear another word I say. And that's unfortunate, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I tell you what I've been through, if I tell you what really has been happening in the last four years, you might say, huh, I don't know about that guy. He's been wounded. <laughs> he failed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what we get sometimes. Trust me, I was, I was scared to show my scars. And that fear led me to a place of isolation. And that isolation led me to a place where the devil was having a field day in my life. Man, four years ago, failed in a lot of ways, fired from a job. Fired. College basketball coach, get fired. Man, that's hard. That's really hard. Struggle with my marriage. Struggle with my marriage. Had moral failure in areas. Started to think that my Instagram life, the life that I was showing everybody else was more important than what was really going on on the inside. You know, my Instagram was looking good. These videos I showed you, my Instagram, it was, it was, it was flowing. But there was something going on. There was something going on. And you know what I did, y'all? I tried to find this pastor. I tried to find that pastor. Maybe if I go to this church conference, man, I'll be able to get free from this addiction that I'm dealing with. Maybe if I talk to this person, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, help me, man. Can you help hold me accountable? Well, God was like, wait, hold on, man. I'm here. I'm here. And it took me a while. But you know what? I'm not the only one that is dealing with that. And now that I look back four years ago, praise the Lord, God has done miracles in the last few years. He has done miracles. But when I look back on that, I think to myself, a lot of people in the body of Christ are scared to show their scars. They're scared to show their scars. They hide behind false images, right? Their Instagram or what everyone else thinks is more important than what's really going on. And you know what else happens, guys? Like when they're struggling, they're scared to go to a friend and say, hey, I'm struggling with this because that friend may look down on them and shame them and bring guilt upon them. I lived that. I experienced that. I experienced that. One of my uh, favorite stories in the Bible, this is a verse that I live by. This is my life. It's a story about a king named Asa, right? And this king, it's a beautiful story, becomes king, becomes judge of Israel during a time where they were struggling, right? And he, and he, he gets into office. He gets into this leadership position. And, and guess what? Started getting rid of idols. Started getting rid of idols. Started getting rid of things that were opposing to God. And he got in that position and he sought the Lord. He sought the Lord. 
And while he was seeking the Lord, guess what? Man, things were going well. There was one part in there, it's beautiful, I don't want to kind of go into the whole passage, because I don't have a lot of time, but there was an army of a million, and I think his army had 300,000, and they defeated an army of a million, 300,000 chariots. And you know how they defeated that army? He stopped and said, Lord God, help me. You are the one that will give me victory. That was his mentality. Read it. It's encouraging. But then something happened. Something happened. There was a change. There was a change. The source of his strength, the one that he went to, the one that he cried out to, there was a change. He didn't go anymore. The Bible says he took alliance with the king. He took alliance with the king. He sought another man. He sought a king. Now, I'm not saying friends and pastors and mentors are bad, but that was his source, right? And then the prophet comes. What does the prophet say? The prophet said, hey, <laughs> you didn't seek the Lord. Like, why did you not seek the Lord? He, he, he's the reason for your success. Why did you not seek the Lord? You got mad, put him in jail, and the end of his life, Basically, all that was said, he got disease, sick, and died. Wow. I love that story. You know why? Because there's a formula there. There's a formula. Seeking the Lord. Relying upon the Lord. Opening your scars up to the Lord. Letting the light of Christ shine in your life is way more valuable than being sensitive about what others think. It's way more valuable than being afraid and putting up this false image, false idols in your life, right? I did it. I'm being vulnerable with you. I did it, and I failed miserably. This verse is in 2 Chronicles 16.9, and it says, For the eyes of the Lord search, he's looking, He's looking for individuals that will commit their lives to him, that will trust in him, that would not allow what society says or even some churches say, that will put their whole life and focus and trust and confidence in him and who he says you are. God is looking. And when he finds someone, the Bible says he will show himself strong through them. That's you. That's who you are. God has an amazing plan for you. But to be honest, I believe this word is for you also, because there may be someone in here that is dealing with some things that they're afraid to open up to the Lord, and they're just running. They're scared, yet everything looks great on the outside, but inside there's some stuff that's going on, and you don't know how to handle it. You're scared to go to your friend or your parents or even a pastor because, oh, he may judge me. Jesus says, I will not. Come to me. I had a, um, a vision. I was in the car with all my kids, right, six of us. We, got in, we had to get a Suburban now because we had a Tahoe and we didn't have enough seats for all the kids. So my wife said, we got outside having babies because she's not going to drive a 15-passenger van. I said, Okay. Suburban looks better than a 15 passenger van for a family. But I'm driving and the Lord speaks to me through visions. I love it, man. It's so cool. It's so much noise in, the, in, in, in my car and just kids are screaming. And, and God showed me a vision of uh, a kid going through a toy chest. Kind of reminds me of this picture right here. That's on Christmas. On Christmas, it's a mess. Like the kids open toys, they throw paper, and just everything's everywhere. And there's this kid in this toy chest. God gave me this vision. He's throwing things. And he's throwing things and just this chaos. And then me, as a dad, comes in like I always do. Hey, stop. You know, it, a lot deeper voice, you know. Hey, kid, settle down in there. Clean all that mess up. You know what I'm saying? That's, that was me. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, two years ago, this is what the Holy Spirit was speaking at the time. He said, that was your life. 
and the enemy was just throwing things. My marriage, uh, my job, <laughs> my, my, my self-image, you know what I'm saying, my confidence in the Lord. Satan was just in there, kill and steal and destroy, just throw this, throw that, throw that. And then Jesus shows up and says, stop. It's enough. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you guys need one of those moments right now? How many of you guys need one of those moments for Jesus to stop and say, you know what, Satan, it's enough. No one knows what's going on right now, but you do. And you need Jesus to show up and to tell Satan you're done. Let me tell you something. He will do it. And I believe today is the time that he's going to do it. There's a reason I came here, and if it's anything to say that Jesus is about to stop what's going on right now in your life, it's going to be over. You're not going to be ashamed of it. He's going to take your shame. He's going to take your guilt. The enemy is never again going to have dominion in your life because you are saying it's over. Amen? And your focus and your strength and your energy and your confidence is not going to come from what school you go to or what church you go to or from what your family did or what your mother does or your father does. It's going to come from who God says you are. And guess what? When that deliverance comes and when that strength comes, then you walk with your chest high because it's not about your performance anymore. We can't perform. We can't do enough to be God's kid. No, we we don't need to do anything. Come to me, trust me. He does it. He puts an end to it. Man, this phrase right here, and I know I don't have enough time. If you have to leave, it's okay. But this phrase right here, but God, there are some but God moments that have to take place in our lives. I was failing. I was struggling. On the outside, it looked great. On the inside, I was dying, but God. My marriage was in shambles. That beautiful family you saw, I almost lost it, but God. But God. I was depressed, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love for which he loved me. He came in and he put it into it. Amen? Lessons learned. Seek the Lord daily. Every day. Every day. That's your source. Nothing else. The other things are great. They're tools, but your source is him. Rely on the Holy Spirit. Depend on him. God wants you to depend on him. That gets him excited. When you depend on him, that gets you excited. The Bible says he's looking for people to depend on him so that he can show himself strong to them. Depend on him. Remove all the false images, right? Don't worry about anything on the outside. Focus on who God said you are. And guess what? God's going to show up. He's going to show out. You guys believe that? Last thing. I love this right here. I love reading the, the Gospels. You know why? Because you get to really get a good feel for who Jesus is. And in so many words, or in less, so less words, three words, these three words come to me. If you can get a hold of that, come to me. Come to me. That will do more for you in your life than anything. Come to me. Come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is like, guys, that's what I did. I hit a rocky place in my life. Four years ago, it was rocky. And it lasted for about two years. And then I just gave it up. And I said, God, I come to you. I need you. And I look back two years later, and I just see where my family is. I see what God has done. I see the purpose and the passion he has given me. And you know one of the biggest things that I've learned, guys? You know, when you mess up and you're nervous and you think you're going to be discredited, you know, and you feel like God's going to cancel you out, 
And then when God comes to you, he says, I love you. And I'm going to restore you to where you were, but I'm going to give you a double portion. That's where I am now. And that's why I asked you, can I be real with you? Because it's not about a message. It's not about a certain number of keys. It's about God doing a work in an individual like me that you may look at and say, I have it all together. But the one that is holding me together is him. And that, that's the decision I made to come to him. And now my confidence, my swag is crazy because he's doing it. And no one can tell me anything. He's doing it. And he's doing it in you. And the reason you're here is because he's going to do it even more. Amen? Can the band come play for me, please? I'm going to close this thing out. Like I said, if you have to leave, leave. But I just believe the Holy Spirit wants to do something. I just, I really believe it. I really believe it. And, you know, I said, come Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. That's your greatest asset. The Spirit of God. He speaks to you. He encourages you. He challenges you. He loves you. He increases your confidence. He says, keep going. Don't give up. He says, don't be discouraged. He says, don't fear. Don't bring shame. Jesus said he took your shame. He took your shame. That was part of the cross's purpose, to take your shame, to take your guilt. That's what he does. Stand up, please. Stand up, please. I really want God to do something here. I really want God to do something here. If you can, close your eyes and just take a moment to focus on the Spirit of God. He's speaking at someone's heart in here. There is someone in here right now that feels like I felt four years ago. And you're dealing with some things that you just cannot break. And you've been trying everything you can to break it, but it's not happening. You've gone here, you've gone there. You've done this preaching series, that preaching series, but the Spirit of God right now is saying, come to me. He's saying, come to me. Don't worry about what people think. Don't worry about what others say. Come to me. And that same Father that loved me and delivered me and put me on high and said that you're loved and that I'm his son is saying that to you right now. So I don't even know how to do this, but I believe the Holy Spirit wants to do something. If this is you, raise your hand. If you believe God is speaking to your heart right now, raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. Don't have any fear. But I believe God is going to break something. I believe God is going to do something in you right now. Next thing I will challenge you with, because I'm going to pray with you. You know what? I'm raising my hand also. I'm raising my hand because I believe God is still doing something in my life. If you have the courage and the faith to come down here and meet me and pray with me, I ask that you come down here and meet me right now if your hand is raised. Come on down. God's going to do something. The Spirit of God is going to do something. And it's not about my message. It's not about any word that I have said. But God is going to do something. I'm so sensitive to the Spirit right now, guys, because I'm so grateful for what he's done in my life. And I just believe that God is going to touch every last one of you. Come on down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise your name, God. Begin to pray to the Lord. I don't care what you say, but begin to speak to him. The Spirit of God is doing a work in your heart right now. And this is your moment with him. It's not about a prayer. This is about your conversation, your dialogue with the Spirit of God. And he's speaking to your heart right now. There are things right now that are being broken off of you. There are things that are being broken off of you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. The enemy is being defeated right now in your life. The enemy is being defeated right now in your life. Chains are being broken right now in your life. 
If you're not up here, I ask that you start praying for these individuals down here. Glory to God. I thank you, Father, that these children, these vessels of yours, God, that you are doing a work in them right now. But most importantly, God, I declare that their purpose is to know you, God, and that that intimacy with you is being developed in them right now. In Jesus' name, I declare power over the enemy in their lives right now. I declare strength in the name of Jesus. I declare power in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way in their lives. In the name of Jesus, no shame, no guilt, no fear, but God, strength, God, faith, God, deliverance, God, purpose, God, power. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord with me, please. Let's go. I don't care. Worship the Lord in your heavenly language. Begin to praise the Lord for what he's doing down here. Begin to praise the Lord what he's doing in your hearts out there. Begin to declare that the Holy Spirit is here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.